What's up everybody, Organized Biology here, and today we are going to be going through an overview of cellular respiration. This is the first video in a subsequent series of three videos going through the three specific steps of cell respiration, but this video is going to serve as an overview to get you prepared to watch those videos to understand them more uh, fully, okay? So let's get started. First off, what is cell respiration, okay? Cell respiration literally means gas exchange in cells, okay? So let's talk about the cell part first. Well, your body is made of 30 trillion tiny little units called cells, and each one of them requires energy. Energy in the form of ATP, okay? Think of this as your fuel source or your energy a currency that your cells use to do all of the function those cells do. So for example, if it's a muscle cell, to use ATP to contract. Okay, if it's a bone cell, it uses ATP to produce the bone matrix itself. Okay, so there's a lot of uses for ATP, and it's going to differ depending on the cell. But this is true. All cells need to make this ATP. So how does it do that? Well, it uses a helpful little friend inside the cell called the mitochondria. The mitochondria, you may have heard of as the powerhouse of the cell, is an organelle that's going to actually produce ATP. All right? However, in order to do this, we need some ingredients, okay? So what are the ingredients, you ask? Well, you need to take glucose, which is the base unit of sugar that you ate, right? It comes from food, carbohydrates. And you also have to bring in some oxygen. How do you bring in oxygen? If you breathe just now, you are correct. So you needed to eat and you needed to breathe in. These are the two main ingredients to cellular respiration, okay? Then, in three steps, which I'll talk about here in a second, we will produce three products. You may see the big product in ATP. We produce about 32 to 36 ATP molecules per glucose and per six oxygen, okay? That's a lot of ATP, okay? We're going to use that to do all the different functions of those cells. However, we also produce carbon dioxide as well as water, six of each. Now the water won't really bother you, but the carbon dioxide actually could if you build it up in excess. So in fact, we breathe this carbon dioxide out just so it's healthy for us. In high amounts, it can be toxic. So if you are in a basic biology class, this is all you need to know. This is a really handy explanation on how we produce ATP. This is the cell respiration equation. Now, if you're in maybe an AP bio, or maybe you just want to go in more detail because you feel like you're smart and you should continue on. And I agree, you should. We have three big steps, okay? And I show that through this arrow. So this chemical reaction where we're organizing different things here and we're changing up the bonds and turning them to these things here require a lot of intermediates, a lot of enzymes, a lot of steps. So let's talk about those real quick before you watch the rest of the videos to learn about them. So the step one, is called glycolysis. I'll go into more detail about this, but this is actually when we're gonna split this glucose molecule as it looks like a hexagon, we're gonna split it in half called glycolysis, literally means sugar breaking, okay? And in the process of doing that, we actually need to have a little energy investment in ATP. So we're gonna have glucose, spark it with a little bit of ATP energy, and we're gonna produce three main outputs. We're gonna produce pyruvate, which is really important for the next steps. We're going to produce NADH, which is important for the third step, and then a little bit of net ATP. So really it produces four ATP, but since we use two and we gain four, you net or total two of them, okay? Now this will happen in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now you may be like, what the heck? That's a weird word. Well, cyto refers to cell. Okay, so it's referring to the cell. In plasm, if you've heard of like plasma, like donating plasma, right? This deals with fluid. So this translates cell fluid. So where this process is occurring is in the cytoplasm, the cell fluid that is inside the cells, basically between all the organelles within the cell itself in the cell fluid, okay? Now, if you're in a class, you may get this question. Is glycolysis aerobic? or anaerobic. What that means is, is, is it using oxygen or is it not using oxygen? In glycolysis, you don't see any oxygen here. So this is considered an anaerobic process. You do not need oxygen to do this. Okay, so that's just a good fun fact to know. 
Okay, in step two, the citric acid cycle, okay? This is going to be a continuing cycle that is constantly happening, changing intermediate so that we can produce things to eventually go to the last step, which I'll get to here in a second. Now, you may notice one of the inputs is pyruvate. So you notice that pyruvate actually was produced in this glycol glycolysis pathway, right? So we need to continue this process in order to continue this process. So pyruvate, as well as two other in intermediates, oxaloacetate and uh, CoA. I'll talk about this in the next video, um, in the citric acid video, my bad. Um, and we're going to produce a few different things. We're going to produce NADH and FADH2. I want you to focus in on these guys. These two are going to move on to the electron transport chain, which is going to use those molecules in a really helpful way. We'll see that later on in the electron transport chain video. Now, also in this, we do produce some ATP, actually two to four ATP in this process, and we also produce carbon dioxide, right? The second process is where we actually produce our carbon dioxide. So I remember that because citric acid cycle, or all, there's a lot of C's here, it produces the CO2, the carbon dioxide. Okay, now where is this happening? This is happening in the mitochondrial matrix, okay? Anybody know like a... Uh, the matrix, okay? Are you talking like Neo and all that stuff? The red pill, blue pill? Anyway, this is inside the matrix of the mitochondria, which is basically the inside fluid of the mitochondria. So I'm going to put two here for step two, citric acid cycle occurring in the matrix of the mitochondria. Wonderful. Now, once these products are produced, I wanted you to focus on NADH and FADH2, right? These guys are going to go into step three, which is the electron transport chain. Notice the two inputs, right? This is where we actually need oxygen as well. So I'm actually going to put six oxygen just for the sake of uh, succinctness. So we need these three ingredients for the electron transport chain. Now, in this process, we're actually going to produce the massive amount of ATP that we so desire. And that's going to be 26 to 30 ATP. That's a lot of ATP. This is a really, really efficient and well-producing ATP process. So very important process. And we're also going to produce NAD and FAD. These are going to be important intermediates that we're actually going to use way back here. And I'm going to explain in the glycolysis video. It basically keeps this whole thing going. And we're also going to make six water molecules. I want to pause here. Check this out. Where did the glucose go? glycolysis, right? Where did the oxygen go? Electron transport chain. So both ingredients of cell respiration are in two separate steps, right? And also the products are kind of strewn throughout, right? 32 to 36 ATP. If you add up all the ATP that I drew, you would get to 32 to 36 ATP. So ATP is being produced in all three steps, but mostly in step three, the electron transport chain. Very important. CO2, we remember, was produced in step two, citric acid cycle, and the water is produced in step three, the electron transport chain. So that's why this small equation doesn't do this whole process justice, okay? Now, last couple things with electron transport chain, then you can get to those other videos. This is occurring in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Now, you see that here in this red. This is the inner membrane of the mitochondria, aptly named because it's inside and it's a little membrane, basically like a barrier, right? Two things I want you to know about the electron transport chain. Number one, since it's the most efficient way to make ATP, we need to increase the amount of surface area to do that actual action. So you may notice inside the inner membrane, you see how it's folded up like crazy, and that is going to increase the surface area. And if we increase the surface area, there's more space to basically make the ATP. Think about like a factory that's like 10 feet long where you're doing an assembly line of 10 feet long versus like 100 feet long. You could probably do a lot more work with a 100 foot long factory than you could a 10 foot long factory. Same concept. In a membrane, fold it up to make ATP. That's one thing I want you to know. The second thing I want you to know is contrast it to glycolysis, which was anaerobic, no oxygen was using, being used. In the electron transport chain, we are using oxygen here. So this process is considered to be aerobic, which means it requires, whoop, requires <laughs> oxygen. Okay, so at this point, if we get through all three steps, this is aerobic 
cellular respiration, how we make AT. So this was an overview of cell respiration. If this was helpful to you at all, please like the video so it can get to more people so they can understand this process well, as well as subscribe if you thought this video and the sequence is helpful. And comment below if you have any questions. This is Zorganized Myology. Thank you so much for watching.